Uh, one of the questions has to do with what your advice might be for um, teachers to help different kinds of minds to solve problems. Well, when you get a label, uh, there's autism, dyslexia, ADHD, sensory processing disorder, conduct disorder, oppositional defiant, whatever label they want to stick on you, and these labels are behavioral profiles that are not precise, these kids will have uneven skills. And in my book, The Autistic Brain, I discuss the three different types of minds. I'm a visual thinker. And when I was eight years old, seven and eight years old, my ability in art really started to show up. I think in photorealistic pictures. Had a lot of problems with algebra. These kids that have problems with algebra, jump them to geometry and trick. Algebra is not the prerequisite for, for geometry because the Egyptians, and, uh, you know, excuse me, the Greeks invented geometry before algebra was invented. Um, then you have the kid that's the pattern thinker. Instead of thinking in photorealistic pictures, they think in patterns. Mm -hmm. Think origami, organic chemistry formulas. These are your mathematicians. These are the kids that would be good at programming and engineering. If you have an eight-year-old or a nine-year-old kid that's super good in math, move them ahead. Don't make them do the baby stuff. And let's introduce programming early. They want to get addicted to something. Let's get them addicted to programming. They're going to get you know paid to do that. And then you have the word thinker, the facts mind, that has uh, knows everything about his favorite subjects. The other thing about these kids, they're bottom-up thinkers. Well, you learn concepts with specific examples. It's the opposite of top down. I learned what a dog was because I now see a picture of all the specific examples in my neighborhood and I'd sort dogs and cats by size. And then we got a dachshund in the neighborhood. Could no longer sort those animals by size. And then I figured out that the little tiny dog had the same nose shape and barks. Okay, I had to find a common feature all dogs have that cats don't have, the dog nose and barking. <laughs> That's good. Education's worse for stupid fads than, than the animal industry. I, how did I manage to get through college when I couldn't do algebra? Thank goodness, in 1967, the required class was not algebra. It was finite math, matrices, probability, and statistics. But education's horrible for all kinds of crazy fads. And I'm really concerned that a lot of these smart, geeky kids they get these labels, they ought to be going to Silicon Valley, are just going nowhere because they want them to um, do all the math some specific way that they can't do it. And when I took um, elementary school math, I mean, you did borrowing and you marked up your paper. Now there's some places saying you can't mark up your paper. I wouldn't have been able to have done it. I was fine with 50s old fashioned math up through sixth grade, find the area of a cylinder, I could do that. Find the volume of a cylinder, no problem.